What if I told you that battery electric vehicle that I toured for you guys when I was at the Japan Mobility Show, David Chow and I, gave you this a walk around on this incredible, low-to-the-ground, futuristic, kind of mid-engine sort of looking battery electric vehicle. What if I told you it's not a Supra, it's not an MR2, but it very well could be the revival and the rebirth of the beloved Celica. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know a lot of you aren't excited for a battery electric sports car from Toyota, but what we saw in October at the Japan Mobility Show gave me hope that they can create exquisite designs, low to the ground sports cars in the electrified era. And there's going to be a lot of new technologies that are going to make electric sports cars fun to drive in the near future. Limitations on battery technology and also in engagement. And Toyota wants to fix that with this potential new sports car, uh, possibly called the Celica. So let's get into this. This is over at Response in Japan. Toyota Celica will be revived as a battery electric sports car running a thousand kilometers with an innovative battery. All right, well, we know we have new prismatic batteries coming out from Toyota. The performance battery we could see in, well, we are gonna see 100% in 2026, but that is going to be on a Lexus model. I think we're gonna have to wait until 2027 to 2028 to get this bipolar lithium ion battery that is going to give us, well, they say about a thousand kilometers range, but it could give us 549 miles of range an EPA. I personally don't think it's going to have that much range. Why would we need that much range in a two-seater? I think they can have the battery, which halves the weight, and we could see a very lightweight, well, for a battery electric vehicle, a very lightweight battery electric sports car with somewhere around 300 miles of range that will recharge super, super fast, 10 to 80 percent uh, in about 20 minutes, which is not like world beating even by today's terms, but I think this is on the conservative end for Toyota. Also on the battery front, Toyota's number one supplier, Panasonic. You know, Toyota has two joint ventures with Panasonic that creates all of their batteries uh, for the most part. They do uh, partner with CATL and BYD for certain um, cars like the BZ4X, also for the Chinese uh, EVs like the BZ3, for example. But Panasonic is signing up for Silas Titan Silicon to deliver unmatched EV performance. So Toyota can also be taking advantage of this technology as well with a potential for a 40% increase in, uh, I think it's energy density. So if that's the case, then we're able to get um, even more range as well. Let's get back to this article because we haven't even started digging into it. The two most important people at Toyota, Koji Sato, the president of Toyota and CEO of Toyota, as well as the chairman, Akio Toyota himself, both have a love and a desire for the Celica. Even before Sato was appointed, Akio Toyota had expressed a desire to revive the Celica for the EV era. And Mr. Sato was also reported to have said, my dream is to see the new Celica. The Celica ended production in 2006. I saw a beat up Celica with a body kit that was falling off of it um, this past week. I was a little bit sad, but it is what it is. Most of them are destroyed uh, due to the tuner crowd from that era. And we even saw seven generations of the Celica. I only remember maybe three or four growing up. Um, but it started way back in 1970. I wasn't born until about, well, the late 80s to give you an idea. So that's when I guess the fourth generation was out. So that's why I only remember just a, uh, three or four generations of the Celica. But this would be an all new eighth generation, kind of like Honda is reviving the Prelude. They're going hybrid. Toyota's skipping that potentially and giving us a full-on battery electric vehicle. It comes as no surprise that this is the same um, giga casting platform that the new LFZC will use. Hopefully Lexus doesn't use that nomenclature for that car. For this new platform, there are three parts that are giga casted. You'll have the front and the rear, which will essentially be identical to the LFZC. Uh, and then underneath, 
is going to be flexible. They can create different gigacasts for the battery. However, this is news that we're just getting right now. The batteries are coming in two sizes for this next gen platform. So you're gonna have two battery packs for simplicity and cost reduction. So you're gonna have a really big one, more than likely for mid to large size crossovers maybe even pickup trucks, electric pickup truck that I showed you in Japan. I really hope that becomes a reality at the end of this decade. Um, but they're saying this battery pack is only 100 millimeters high. I don't know if I took a picture of it when I was at Japan Mobility, Mobility Show. If I did, I'll put it on the screen for you guys. It's really, it's only about this thick, the new battery. And since it is so short, that battery pack, you can sit lower in the vehicle, the battery's weight is lower as well. So you have a lower center of gravity, so these vehicles will handle better. Currently what we see on the market with most EV manufacturers, the, the car is just, you sit up higher. Let's take like the Genesis G80 electric, one of my favorite electric cars, it's a sedan, right? I sit up really high in that vehicle because I'm sitting on top of the battery packs compared to the gasoline models where there's nothing underneath me other than the floor of the vehicle. Now we're able to essentially get as low, if not lower than current gas models um, with this new low height battery pack. Now they're saying the coefficient of drag will be 0.2. That's awfully slippery. I think that's what Toyota and Lexus is estimating as well with the LFZC. This is what is surprising to me. A maximum output of only 300 horsepower at the most is what they're saying 250 ps to 300 horsepower that is really hard for me to believe what i would like to see is rear wheel drive but two motors for true torque vectoring in the rear i just don't know what to say about this again this is all I take everything what you're hearing with a grain of salt today but i think toyota is committed to whatever this vehicle is going to be called but the power output only 250 to 300 horsepower i guess with that small of an electric motor that being being so miniaturized you could see insane insane amount of range on it but i don't know is toyota going to really put in a large range battery pack i guess here's the thing if you're only creating two battery packs for mass production in order to keep the cost low, maybe they put in just the smaller of the battery pack, which is probably going to give you tons of range. It's hard to say what they're going to do, but it gets me excited, especially with this last sentence. They expect the new Celica BEV to be equipped with the virtual manual transmission, which is currently under development. Uh, we know that this exists in a UX, I think, right now, uh, a fully electric UX in uh, Shimiyama test course uh, for Lexus. And this is what, I, from what I've read, it sounds amazing. You can change everything about that manual transmission to your liking. Um, and it feels like a manual transmission from my understanding. You can even stall the car. And if you don't want it, you can just set it on fully automatic since it's all synthetic anyway, synthetic gearing, and then it'll, it'll just run like any other car or should I say electric car with no gears, or you could probably simulate um, rowing through with like paddle shifters, eight gears or whatever, how many gears you want to. And the fun thing is, is that Toyota, you might guys might not like this, but as Toyota improves this uh, manual transmission over time, you could be able to download and pay, let's say five bucks to get like a new manual transmission pack or a new engine sound pack that comes through the speakers. So you get LFA or maybe you get some retro stuff or I don't know. The, the sky's a limit with customization with battery electric vehicles and over the air software updates. So I am now more excited potentially than I was when I was walking around this vehicle in Japan. Now this is a, a their render. Yeah, which they're just making their own splash on it. The Toyota version of this looks a little bit better, a little bit cleaner, but the only changes they made was really with the front end here. So I just wanted to update you guys. What would you like to see from a fully electric sports car from Toyota? How much power would you need to have? Now, even with 300 horsepower in a small vehicle like this, it still would be able to do zero to 60 in probably five seconds. But with electrification, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to get four, 500 horsepower uh, from a rear motor setup.
in my opinion, especially if you're doing true torque vectoring with independent motors for the rear wheels. And maybe a single motor up front to give it all-wheel drive, but maybe they have different flavors. That's the beauty of EVs. You can easily mix and match motors, in theory, to give this thing different performance grades. So maybe the base model, you just have a GR and it's 250 horsepower. And then you have a, uh, let's say, a a GRMN with 300 plus horsepower. So that's a potential. Toyota has nothing but uh, But with electrification, it's going to be easy to give us different flavors of power output. So you could have a base model. Um, let's say it's GR. And then but with electrification, it's so easy to give us different increments of power. You could just put in different electric motors in theory um, and have a GR model that has 300 horsepower or a GRMN model that gives us all-wheel drive and 400 horsepower, something like that. So the sky's the limit. Toyota can do anything they want with this in the era of electrification. It makes it really easy uh, to come up with performance enhancements, I think, in the electrified era. But I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the comments below if you're excited for sports cars in the electrified era, era, smash the like button. Whether we have a choice over or not, at least Toyota is committed to providing fun cars that have electrified powertrains. So I'm excited for that, even though I would always prefer. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves and peace out.